Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are back with Katie Hopkins all the way from the United Kingdom. Katie is a commentator, an author, an expert on all things in Europe, especially uh, Islamic Jihad, immigration, and so on. She's a friend of President Trump. She's been on the news in the United States with Fox and other networks. And she has a book out called Rude, which I urge you to check, check out. Katie, welcome back. Thank you very much for having me back. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, great. So let's continue our discussion and let's start off with your PM, Boris Johnson. He seemed when he was running to be somebody who was quite vocal about Brexit. In other words, the UK leaving the uh, European Union. And he had very strong uh, opinions on open borders and unfettered immigration into the United Kingdom. Has that changed? What's his current stance? Mm, I guess I need to describe it a little bit like a marriage. Uh, and I say that because I have asked Boris Johnson to marry me once when I met him. I'm a massive fan of his. Uh, he said no, disappointing. Uh, but if we were married, I'd say that we've had our honeymoon period with Boris Johnson. And believe me, uh, the honeymoon was fantastic. I'll go there in a second. And now we're into the bit where I'm wondering, did we do the right thing? Did we marry the right guy? Did we make the right, where is he gone? So just briefly, the honeymoon period, and bear in mind, Boris Johnson is a brilliant individual. He speaks Latin and Greek fluently. He can recite Homer's Odyssey from memory as Lord Mayor, as the Mayor of London. London was really in its heyday. It was a great time for Britain. And when we re-elected Boris Johnson on the 12th of December, 2019, he hit that parliament building. He threw out all the remainers that were stopping Brexit from happening. And he said, we will get Brexit done. And he was that guy. And he took no prisoners. He said everything we wanted to hear, but he acted it as well. He went to Europe and he told them, we're not dealing with you, we're leaving. And we were leaving and it was just a joy. He was the hero I waited my whole life for since Thatcher. Um, but something happened to Boris um, during Corona COVID. To start with, we were looking very hopeful with Boris. He wasn't willing to lock down for Corona, but then something happened to Boris Johnson and almost overnight he became a puppet of the science. And Americans will understand what this is like with Fauci when we start following the science. For me, the science is the kind of brute squad of the leftists. In my country, the science is the socialist worker. It is the Marxist. It's everything, all the people who don't want us to succeed. So Boris seems to have really backed away from being strong Boris. And he's now a much weakened version of himself and we're all wondering where did Boris go? What, what happened to Boris Johnson? Well, in, in, it might have been he got very ill, but what about immigration? We, we've talked about that you and I before. What's Boris's stance on this open immigration policy that I understood when he was running was not going to be the policy anymore? Hmm. Yes. So it, it, when he was running, he was going to get rid of open doors, shut the borders, uh, and he talked of a points-based immigration system, much like Australia, something we've been asking for for a very long time. Over the period of corona with COVID and bills going through Parliament with COVID, Boris quietly took that points-based immigration system bill and popped it on a shelf while no one was looking because a lot of our workers in our socialized healthcare are from overseas, they are minorities, they are from places that are, would have been affected by the point based. He thought it would be politically a poor decision to push forward with that. And so Corona has not only disrupted lives and how people live and jobs and the economy, Corona has also disrupted bills which were essential for trying to re-establish some idea of what Britain might be in the future. And so that's also been, uh, you know, a very poor thing that we've seen. Boris hasn't carried on through with that bill right, yet, right now. 
Well, in regards to that, and you and I have discussed this before, what are the implications of open borders and unfettered uh, applications where everybody gets in and you've talked about it, free housing, free medical care, uh, free whatever you want, whether you're legal or not, you can stay as long as you like and you don't have to be part of the British culture. What does that mean for the future of Britain? I think probably the best way to, to, to say it, and it's not something I talk about much being a mother. I'm not very motherly by nature. I, um, I think I'm far more male, really. But I have three children, 16, 15 and 12. Um, and as a mother, if I want to uh, ring a doctor to get um, an appointment at doctor surgery, I need to be ready when that opens at 8.30. I need to be on the phone. I need to know the number and I need to be able to keep redialing it to try and get through to try and get an appointment because by the time i get through they're all gone if i want to get my child into a school a local school just up the road i have to campaign and lobby my way round because as a white brit i'm at the back of the queue because if you're a minority ethnic or asylum or on welfare you're at the front of the queue so every time things are being weighted against me as a taxpaying national and all newcomers go to the front of the queue. And I suppose a, a good example of that is a city in the north where these migrant homes are they're pushed into those homes. Some British nationals have found out they cannot get a school place for their child because the asylum seekers get the places first and have very, very large families. So we aren't only forced out in a sort of emotional way, we're forced out in a way that is where we are competing for resource, doctors, schools, uh, we are forced out of those places too. And meanwhile, of course, we pick up the tab. So, so we are this sort of eternal laughing stock being laughed at by the very thing that the left would have us welcome with open arms. Well, that sounds horrid. However, there's a corollary to the states. Um, here, obviously, we have a constitution that is very strict on the separation of church and state. Uh, a public school, I mean, a non-religious public school is not allowed to teach religion. Uh, and yet, uh, the Democrat leading politician in the United States, Joe Biden, who is their presumptive presidential nominee and will run against Trump uh, in the fall, came out this week and said he wants Islam taught in the public schools. What do you make of that? For Biden, of course, strategically, that's very smart play. He's following down the route map that we have set out for him. And the truth is, of course, here, if demographically by 2030, Muslim births outnumber births to all other, then the only way you are going to achieve political power in the UK after 2035 is by winning the Muslim vote. Biden is planting early that he is, the Democrats are, the home of the Muslim vote. Here in the UK, Labour are already well down that path. So they re rely on the Muslim vote. The Muslim vote is Labour. And it's the reason there is such a problem with anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, and Democrats will have this as well, because no politician can afford to defend our Jewish diaspora because you don't want to upset the Muslim vote because you need the Muslim vote. It's a very dark path. And having spent a lot of time looking around at the fall of America in terms of Michigan, Dearborn, I've spent time inside that mosque at Dearborn, you can see the Democrats are already very aware of where their future votes will come from. I think you're right. And it's horrifying for us in America as it is for you in Britain. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report today and a very special thank you to our friend Katie Hopkins across the pond in the UK. Katie, tell people how to find you again, please. Sure, come find me on Parler, P-A-R-L-E-R, -E for those that don't know. And on there, I am capital K, capital T, Hopkins, K-T, Hopkins. I urge you, our ATP followers, go check her out. We're on Parler too. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to us on your cell service, please sign up by sending the message TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed. All the content is free. 
You'll get it a couple of times a week, and all you have to do is look at your cell phone. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Nussbaum.